We love that lady. Um, okay, so first of all, I am wearing my mask this way because it is required when you're on City College campus that you wear a mask at all times. I'm in a closed door room, although it is a room that is, um, it's locked on the outside so someone can't just accidentally walk in. But technically you're supposed to wear your mask on campus at all times unless you're in your office and you won't be interacting with anybody. So, I, but I thought it would be great to have you see what it looks like to walk into the makeup room. So if you watch the trailer and I, Kobe and I watched it on the, um, when we were meeting about his makeup kit and he said, that makes me lonesome for the school. And it's really great. So this is what it looks like when you walk in. So there are two banks of stations on both sides. We can accommodate a normal times up to 25. And then I'll turn on this bake of light so you can see how great the illumination is. Cara, aren't you just dying? Wouldn't you love to work in this room? I'm saying Cara because she has worked professionally and she knows what a privilege it is to have a room like this. Because you are often working on a sound stage, you're putting on extra lights, you can't see anything. I mean, it can be a real piece of work, right? That, that room is huge. And Isn't I'm used beautiful? to work, Yeah, I'm used to working like next to a dumpster in the dark. Like it's crazy what I have to work under. Can I see your hand just a moment, please? So uh, this, this room has 25. We have, I'll show you a little bit of this room because it's really cool. If we walk down the room, you can see that everyone has a rolling chair. Each chair is numbered. Each station is numbered. So we have a number here and you have a corresponding chair that's numbered. I just had to do a whole protocol for the school because we are still trying to do an outdoor performance. And then we have a station here on this side, which has complete access. So this has its own bank of lights. And this platform comes up and I've had students that needed to have assistance or wheelchairs or anything like that. So here's a couple of the wigs that you'll see when I show you the, the longer version of the, of the uh, trailer. And then our dressing rooms, we have a lot of wig storage, quite a good selection. Are you guys seeing the wigs? Yes. Excellent. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you, someone, for responding. So that's our that's the, the women's dressing room, and we have the same for the men. And we have, I think they'll show you in the video, but we have some gr other great things. So it's a really wonderful workspace, and it's wonderful as a performer to come into an assigned space so that you know that you have one space to go to. And Ida can talk about that. Ida worked with us last fall, and she was in Blythe Spirit. What'd you think, Ida? Uh, like when we did the show? Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's great. Um, I mean, it was, that was probably the biggest thing that I had done so far. So it was just incredible, you know, being in that space and getting all those privilege, I want to call them privileges. Um, it was it was it was really cool. It was amazing, and I, I just miss it so much. Not that you're like showing us around. Uh, it's it's kind of hard not being there. Well, and even Colby said, I mean, he's in town. He still isn't. You know, we're just no one gets to be here. I mean, that's a real that's the unfortunate truth about it. So it's great that we have this option. I'm just going to turn these off. You guys won't see me so well, and maybe I'll turn around. Christine, question. First off, I'm sorry for being late. No worries. And Thanks. the second, uh, sorry. The second thing is, my dad ordered the TK1 kit a few weeks ago. I'm going to have it soon. Good. He probably ordered it after we talked on Thursday. Yes. So 
Uh, and I'll give you an update on that, folks. I ordered the kits and they were shipped on Friday to here. So I expect I'll have them by Tuesday after our class today. I'm going down to security and shipping and let them know that I'm expecting this box and they'll call me as soon as they come in. So what I'm hoping is actually tomorrow afternoon or Wednesday morning, I'll be able to pass your kits out to you. And then remember, you're supposed to send me an email, and I'm sorry, I didn't check my email today, but you're supposed to send me an email if you want me to um, give you some of those uh, schematics or face charts, and then tell me if you want what your face shape is. So you want oval or rectangle, okay? And then we'll pass those out. Remember, I sent you an email about how you can, here comes Sarah, about how you can, um, pay for those is you will call our theater manager. You will email our theater manager. Hi, Christine. Yeah, I see that one. That's not the one I gave you, but that's one that you can use if you want. Um, you can pick another face chart off of the internet if you want. If you have one, for example, Cara, that you like. Do you, have you ever worked with a face chart? You're muted. I have, but I actually, uh never like did a real face chart for like the face shape yeah i've just always grabbed a face chart and done what i needed so right i'm excited to actually do it properly <laughs> well so. and the great thing is you'll be able to on uh we'll be able to fill those in also so what i'd like to do is screen share i want to screen share the entire course week by week and then i'd like you to, to let here's there's a couple of problems with canvas one thing is the canvas only allows you to upload assignments when they when you upload assignments then they appear on the syllabus but it's at the very bottom of the syllabus page so i have an overview that i'll show you so that you can refer to that and then think about where you'd like that to be on the canvas page so that you can see it okay because i thought well if i put it in the home page then it's this and i put it in syllabus so you know, like I can put it in week two module, here's the, here's the daily syllabus. So just decide where you'd like that. And I'm gonna screen share this right now. I think I have it right behind me. Where is it? Yeah, yeah, okay. So here we go. And I'll try, I think now I get a little note if somebody's gonna do this. And then, um, then we're gonna move on from there. All right, so this is the daily uh, makeup, what we're going to do for the entire semester. And I can, I would like to post this on the Canvas page so you can be looking ahead and thinking about what we're doing. So our first day we did our orientation, we did the syllabus, talked about the workspace and your supplies. And then Wednesday we spent some time on character analysis how you would be looking at the character on the page for the face map. And you should try and download one of the face maps so that you can actually work with the face map before we actually do it. Today, we will be working with makeup materials. I'm gonna show you some materials and what they do. And then we can practice shading with your pencil so that we can get that idea. And then, I don't know if I can show you a video, but I will see if I can. So I wanna check on if you have those supplies from your supply list. Remember the things you're supposed to gather from home, that you're supposed to gather a smock, you're supposed to gather some different things, tissue and tweezers and some nut scissors. Remember that list that we talked about the first day? So we wanna to touch on that again. Planning the corrective makeup. Then on Wednesday, I will do a demo of corrective and I'll show you how I'll do my worksheet and I'll do a corrective and then I'm gonna turn the corrective into glamor, okay? And in class, you will be able to complete your corrective makeup schematic so that your assignment last Wednesday was, does anybody remember? Christine. The corrective assignment is the face shape and volume. We're to find three 
thank you for that. That's that's related. We're to find three corrective images for you to follow for your um, corrective makeup. I can't stand the darkness. I should get a lamp in here. Um, you can find three corrective makeup uh, out of the internet, just like we did when you guys screen shared last Wednesday. And you're going to find three glamour shots because those are going to be inspiration and they're going to talk to you and tell you how you're going to execute this makeup, which we're going to do a week from Wednesday. Okay. That's why you need your kit. I've tried to put it out far enough that everyone would have their kit by then. Monday, a week from today is a holiday. So there's no class. Okay. All right. Questions. Did I see your hand up? Cara. Um, so I was looking for that in the modules, but I didn't see the corrective assignment. Um, right. Okay. And then Still I had out a week. Okay. And so we're just doing inspiration because obviously what I need corrective on me right. is going to be different on someone. On me. Okay. Yeah. And I will show you, um, I can show you a, what I use for a corrective in, in, a corrective in my case. You know, I have a very basic person that I use as a just a basic corrective to look at. So I have no makeup today. So we're talking about a naked face. And you guys will need to do a naked face picture of yourself. So you can do a selfie and then you can post it. Now remember that when you do a selfie, sometimes that reverses the image and you can change that on your phone too. Okay, so I want you to think about doing a naked face picture with your hair back like this so that we really see just like when you established your face shape, you see just the face. Okay, and then you have something that's not this to look at, but you're looking at something out here that is away from you. And that will really help you have distance from yourself so that you don't feel like, oh no, I'm making myself look ugly or I'm making myself look silly or whatever. You're making that person, that photo is what you're making look a different way. Okay, so we're in week two. We're gonna practice the shading on the page with a pencil. We're gonna get our makeup kits. You're gonna look at a demo next Wednesday. Week three, we have a holiday and then we have the corrective. So I'll, I'll detail these, each of these assignments out. They all come with a rubric. They come with directions and then you'll see a demo so you can work on them in class. Week four, we're going to practice a uh, different modeling with paint with our makeup to do a thin faced character. And you guys will actually execute that and we'll have a quiz. And then the next on Wednesday that week, we'll do round face. So I will demo at the top of class, both of those. Okay. And then week five, middle age, we're going to talk about the skull, what happens, nasal labial folds. You're going to make funny faces in the mirror. We'll look at covering eyebrows with putty wax. Um, you can also make eyebrow covers with latex. And we can do, we'll do um, glue stick. So we'll practice a lot of different kinds of eyebrow. This is a workshop day. And I think I'm going to move that, the um, eyebrow practice up here. And then we have clown makeup. And that's when we're going to be able to start working with color. Up until now, up until week six, we're trying to really just to discover skin tone, highlight, shadow, okay? We're not working with color, we're not doing anything else. I mean, unless you're doing a little bit of rouge or something like that. And now we'll start working with color and color can change everything. And one thing it does is it helps you train your eye and your brush so that your brush is not going into another color where you want your color to stay. And then we'll also learn a different powdering technique. We'll work on animal. Week seven, we'll have, I'll, I'll um, upload some different animals because these are not cartoon animals. You'll see some amazing animals that have been done in this class. Week seven, we'll be doing old age. 
And this is when we'll do our first portfolio check. You'll upload your first five makeups and that'll be uh, really discussed. We're gonna have the Antigone discussion here. I think I don't actually have the dates yet for Antigone, so that discussion may move around. Somehow everything's in flux with the whole pandemic thing. We're not sure. I just got cast updates for my other, for the musical that we're doing and there's gonna be four more people than I expected. So um, then we're gonna talk about facial hair and we'll be doing a crepe hair beard. So if you're in town, I will be giving you some hair and you'll already have spirit gum in your kit. And if you're out of town, I will mail you hair. So um, for example, Ida is having her kit mailed to Sweden and I will mail her hair as well. Uh, then we'll have a midterm, which will be practical. It'll be something that you'll do during class time. It'll be a makeup you'll execute on yourself and I will get to watch you do it. That'll be fun. And we'll do historical, creating historical likeness. This is one thing that is very common in almost any kind of film is you are making yourself look like someone else. So you're either working on a historical likeness, you're working on a role reversal character, you're working um, making yourself look like you know, Jacqueline Kennedy, or you're looking like the queen of England, you're looking like um, you know, it could be anyone. Selena, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of times when you want to look like, I just, I just read something about, uh, who is it that's going to be Obama and, oh, it's a new movie that's coming out. So he said, you know, I tried to get it with gesture more than with the actual face. Then you can do a Halloween makeup, whatever you want. By then you'll have some experience with latex, you'll have a little bit of experience with nose and scar wax, you'll have some experience with crepe hair, and you can create a really fun Halloween makeup. Christine. I actually do have a question. Yes. Can we do an anime in makeup? For Halloween? For anything? Well, that you have to think about, first of all, I don't know what anime character you're thinking of. Oh, I was thinking my well, you anime and manga. Me? You don't need to tell me right now. That's something that what you would do so that we, uh, you can decide if that yeah. particular anime character works with any of the assignments, okay? Yeah. So we'll, and then you can decide if that's gonna work. And that'll be a totally fine thing to do, okay? Okay. Um, now, then week 11, we're, about three quarters of the way through. So we're gonna start doing aging and doing some 3D techniques. <laughs> we'll have a bald cap demonstration. I'm not gonna have you, normally in this class, you actually do a bald cap. That's why those two assignments that you saw, you saw a bald cap uh, on those two characters that I put into announcements because you normally do a bald cap in this class, but I can't, have you do a bald cap remotely because I can't directly supervise you. And I think it's something that if you do something wrong, you might uh, put yourself in danger because we'll be working with spirit gum. You work with it around the area of the eye and that could be, you know, that you, if you make a mistake or, you know, I just don't want to take that risk. So that's something that's better done when I can directly supervise. But you'll have a demo and you'll get to see what it looks like. And then we're going to have a Veterans Day holiday. Woohoo! And this will be after the election. And we'll all be so glad the election will be over so we don't get any more email about that. Okay, and then we'll do accident victim. And again, <gasps> for, um, you'll be looking for examples. For each one of these, you will always have to do two to three inspiration pictures. You will have to do your makeup schematic. You will execute your makeup and then you will photograph your makeup. Those are the four pieces for every single assignment. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then uh, your midterm is going to be accident victim from someone else's schematic. 
So you will do your schematic and your accident victim, and then I will have those, and I will assign you to someone else's schematic, and you'll see uh, this is a communication test. It's how well did you indicate what you wanted to have <coughs> that person do in terms of their makeup, and also how well the person can translate what you said. So that's a really, it's a very tricky technical um, midterm, but the great thing about it is you really know where you are. You know all your bag of tricks, you have all of your tools, you've already done an accident victim, you have a chance to look at that, take a photo, and then we'll assess that, see if you need to make your schematic even better, and then that schematic will be shared with someone and their midterm will be to recreate that makeup that you did in their on their own face so it is a really fun 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 project and then we'll go right to final design approval where you're going to design something from a play the final it's up i think you are do color from a master painter this is often the most exciting piece we do in class you will look at master painters and try to create that two-dimensional image on your face um, people have done everything from Picasso to Manet to uh, Toulouse-Lautrec to a wide variety of George O'Keefe, um, Dali. So you find a master painter and then you interpret that painting for your face in a very abstract way. And it's really exciting because you're learning color from a master. You're learning line from a master and then you're doing the interpretation of the that onto a three-dimensional surface, which is really challenging and really is, your brush control will be pretty good by week 14. Remember, it's all about practice. So you'll have some really good things. We'll do a day of makeup prep for your final execution. And then on the second, you will execute during this class. The reason why you execute your makeup final during the class is because class time is 20 minutes longer than the final exam time, which is exactly two hours. And that really doesn't give you enough time to prep, get into your makeup, do your makeup, and then get out of your makeup. So that you need that extra 20 minutes. And then on the last day of class, you'll do your presentation of your 10 best. And we'll, everyone will get screen share and you can show us your 10 best so everybody will get to see them because we won't always get to see each other's makeup. The problem with this format is that you will not always get to see what your partner's doing. And that's one of the rich things about working in this room is that you can walk around the room, you can take a break, you can look at what someone next to you is doing, and you can learn from what somebody maybe three or four chairs over is doing and can think, how did you do that? That's a very exciting thing that you're, you're doing right now. And that's a great way to um, be able to access it. These are some makeup videos that are available at the Learning Resource Center. And I'm going to see how I can get you guys access to that. If you have, if you're a student, you should have, be able to, with your K number, um, have access to everything in the library. Have you ever done that, Colby? Did you do that on your online class this summer? For, for library stuff? Yeah, like have them show a particular video um no because the class was all on um just canvas. on canvas yeah. yeah and you bought the book and it gave you an online code type thing right okay so i have some you know you know like i told you before i after we did our screen share in our groups last week um i emailed the guy who teaches the humanizing canvas presence i said hey did you know you could do this he said no i had no idea we could do that so you know it's like we're gonna we break the book here we're just gonna try and do things one other thing I wanted to talk to you about is I found there's a, at the public library in Santa Barbara, there is a, um, a program called Canopy, K-A-N-O-P-Y. Has anybody ever used that? Suze, you've used it? You have? Awesome. Christine, you've used it? Yeah. How did you use it? I use Canopy for makeup stuff. Yeah, tell me what you did. I use Canopy to look up makeup techniques. 
Okay, so Canopy is a film, it's a film-based program. So yeah. you can watch films and you can watch them for free. And uh, Susie, why don't you talk about it? Have you done it through the public library? Yeah, um, I like looking for documentaries. So you just like put in the documentary and you can find it for free. You just get your library card, put it in and register and, and you can get it for free. Like I found this really, and you can find like really hard documentaries. Like there's this one documentary that I spent like months finding to watch for free called Homegoings and I found it on Canopy. So it's a really good resource. Yeah, excellent. So Canopy works with uh, a local library card. Your local library may have it where you are. And it also said a university card. So Santa Barbara City College is not a signator to Canopy yet, but we, the entire fine arts division is, is trying to kind of force their hand in that. So um, it looks like they'll be getting a membership and then we'll be able to do that through our library. But that's why I asked about showing videos through our library if they've done that. Because I know if I show a video and screen share it, it's jerky. And I don't know if I can, these are certain videos that have been made by Ben Nye. So I'm not sure that I can screen share them with you. Does that make sense? Colby, you have a question? Are you guys chatting back and forth? Look at that big dog, Philippe. Uh, I can't get him off once he decides he wants to get off. <laughs> oh, I remember you. You'll yeah. have to, have, you'll have to um, create your workspace. <laughs> He's joining us today, so you'll have to create your workspace where he um, can't have access to you. Yeah. Right? That's I'm on the couch, tricky. right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So let me ask you a question about where I should place that daily syllabus. Where would you look for it? Just think about it for a couple minutes. I, I really don't think it works so well in home. Yeah, just you. I'm asking the whole class. Oh, modules. Put it in modules. Yeah, I it like the most intuitive kind of modules. Colby. Yeah. Announcements make sense because it's an announcement. The only thing about announcements is, uh, then it's. It, I guess you'd have to search down through announcements to oh, okay. access it every time. Yeah, modules is okay then. I can I can figure it out. Okay, I we, you know what? I'll do both. Okay. I'll put it in. <laughs> I'll put it in uh, under the. I'll I'll uh, after class I'll put in the to do for week two, and really it's it we don't have a massive amount to do this week. Yay! Because I have to tell you, I I taught a six week class this summer and I was like there was so much work to do every single week. I just was underwater. So I'm glad this one is a little bit slower. And we don't have to actually, you know, kill ourselves every single day to do something. So uh, I will put it in announcements and then I'll put it at the top of modules week two. Okay. okay. That'll be easy to access and it'll be called daily syllabus. And that way, if you ever have a question of where we are going to be in week four or week six or whatever, even if the materials are not showing you yet, they're there. And one of the reasons I don't show you all the materials at once is because I think it could be overwhelming. Because by the time you break down every single assignment, it can get overwhelming. Okay, questions. And then if no one else has one, and we'll go to Christine. I do have a comment on Canopy. Yeah. Um, I think, and I can research this for you, but I think teachers can um like screen share or put it to view on the classroom since it's for educational purposes and you don't need a licensing or anything dealing with that but i can check in more for you i i think that's right because i have a friend at westmont that they have canopy mm -hmm. um but the problem with screen share is we don't really you don't really get a good image because it's kind of jerky yeah and what i would prefer to do is to is to be able to have you guys be able to look at it 
uh, or post the link so that then you're looking at it and you're getting a direct feed instead of getting it from to my computer than to you guys, right? Okay, cool. But any research you want to do on it, if you want to send that, then I can share that in announcements so people can understand how to access it. Cool, then I'll do that. Great, because most of the kids who have done film studies have had some experience with Canopy. And Christine, did you have your a question? I do. Okay. Where are we going to be for week seven? I don't know, what did we say? Here, I'll go look at it, just a second. Well, first of all, we're gonna be right here in front of our computers. But you mean, what are we gonna do? We will be doing old age. We'll be talking about old age characters and we'll be talking about how to prepare uh, crepe hair to make a beard. Oh, okay. I remember something about crepe hair. Okay, well, you know what? When we get to that part in week seven, you can add in that part, okay? Okay, and I remember someone else from high school. Great, okay. So I'm gonna show you uh, also the website for theater so that you can see that the entire movie, okay? Let me screen share that and you can see that entire movie. So here we go. Did any of you not see the, um, did any of you not see the uh, trailer? I might have. Who, did, it, did everybody see the trailer? Here, let me go there. So if I put that link in announcements, uh, you just have to search down through announcements like this. Okay, so I'll put it there. But here's the trailer for the City College Theater Complex. And I would like you to see this. This is the teaser. And then I'll show you how to find. students, current and former, we're here at the Garvin Theater and I'm going to show you around. But first things first, since COVID-19 is going on, we're wearing masks. But I want to let you know that we've cleared the area and I want to be able to connect with you a little more about my mask on so you can see my emotional effect. So no, That's our Garvin everything's theater. perfectly safe without a mask here because we're taking the proper precautions. But whenever you're on campus, we want to make sure you know that you should be wearing a mask. We're right here outside the beautiful Garden Theater in front of the box office. You can see we've got grass, sky, and ocean for days. If you haven't been here, welcome. We're gonna show you around so you can know what it's like to be a student here and what it's like to attend a play here. So if you're taking part of a review process for a play, There's our room. you'll know some of the things of what it's like to be an audience member. Welcome incoming students. Welcome back students of all. We're happy to have you here and we can't wait to see you in person. See you soon. Okay, so this is the link, Santa Barbara sbcc.edu slash theater arts that I'm gonna take you to next. And that's where you see the full guided tour. So that's what Kara asked. And uh, I'm going to uh, get out of this thing. You guys know that when we upload to YouTube, if you select caption, that your all the uh, films will be captioned. That's why we go there, okay? So, just wanna look at your faces. So how many of you had seen that already? Because I put it in announcements. Everybody should have looked at it at least one time, but it does make you homesick, doesn't it? We have a great facility. So Cara, I can tell you want to move from Vegas already. Yeah, well, well. For other reasons as well, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I worked there once. It's like, no thanks. I worked in Reno once too. I actually like Reno better. So, um, okay, now we're going to take a quick look at the website. I know we looked at it once before, but I want to show you where to find that movie. Let's see if we can do that. Did anybody look for the whole guided tour? Christina, you did? Christina? Yeah. 
And I did. How long was it? About five to 15 minutes. It's over an hour. So maybe you didn't see the whole thing. So hold on a second and we'll get there. Okay, let's see. I guess if I go here, I can get to, I'll get to right here. Here we go. So it was sbcc.edu slash theater arts. And let's see what we get. Okay. So we're going to go on to theater arts and we're going to try and find, there's Ben again, mm -hmm. our programs. These are the masks that we made last year. This is in the makeup studio. This is in the small uh, Garvin theater, I mean in the Jerkowitz theater. Okay, alumni spotlight, you can find out about different people who graduated. Now, where's our little movie? Hmm. Here we go. No, day in the life, that's not it. <laughs> Wait, let's see if that's what it is. I guess you spend a lot of time at the beach. Oh no, this is just the one minute one. That's Leona's class, acting for the camera. So. Here we are in our studio. I think we're working on corrected. He teaches, also teaches uh, acting for the, for the camera and also voice and diction. Okay, just a second. We don't want to do this. We want to find, well, if I can't find it, But maybe it's this one. What do you think? This is very good experience for me. I thought we'd be able to go here and it'll be super easy and I can't seem to find it. Is any... So you guys, I'm sorry about that, but this is our, let's see, nothing there. That's just gives you blah, blah. Okay. I wonder if it'd be under um, gallery maybe. Okay, let's try that. I saw a gallery somewhere. Down here. Just shout out if you have any help because I think it, I think other it other should screen. say movie. <laughs> I think it was on the other screen. Okay. Oh yeah, right. I've clicked on this screen now. So now we're stuck in this, in this world. <laughs> uh, like Coraline. Not about the theater group. Uh, maybe I'll go back. Yeah, that was program information. Yeah, oh, gallery, right. here we go. I think this is just images. That was spelling bee, noises off. That's a great wig. <laughs> also a great wig and a funny mustache. <laughs> for you guys to keep an eye on. Oh, this is the... Um, this is that all about love show that we did. It was an original, it was really quite amazing. Sense and Sensibility last year. That was Lifeboat. Grease. That's the garment huh? theater. Oh, Life, Lifeboat is in the uh, Jerkowitz Theater. The entire theater looked like you were surrounded by the ship because that's <laughs> a fiction. And then this Grease. is. Crimes of the Heart, <laughs> High Society, 
Yes, we made all those maid skirts. They were fun. <laughs> oh, Christine, you'll like this. These are anime blouses that we got for the maids. I love them. This is the um, How to Succeed in Business, which was our musical we did last summer. And I think oh. that's it. Okay, so that's not, anyway, I will have to get instructions because I did want to show you where that is and that's reasonable to ask. So that's a one minute thing. Okay, well, I'm very sorry. That's not gonna help us at all. Now, how many of you got an audition announcement? How many of you filled it out? Yeah, it's gonna be Antigone. So there's, there's room for a, a wide variety of uh, people. I think Antigone and Ismene are, are younger, but Creon is older. The messenger could be older. The watchman is a soldier. The um, chorus is supposed to be the elders of the community. So there's a wide variety of things that you can um, that you can look at. Okay, Christine, do you have an, a question? I know. I actually did go on that announcement, and I submitted one for the Watchmen. Okay, so you made a video, a selfie of yourself, and then you submitted that for the audition. Correct? Yes. Good. Okay. So everyone has that opportunity that you can all audition. It will be a Zoom show. It doesn't matter where you live. You can be in any one of the roles. We're looking for a cast of 21. There are 10 named characters, uh, including the chorus leader, and then there will be five and five or something like that. Um, maybe there's 11. I know there's 21 total, so I think there's gonna be six male and six female chorus that they represent the entire um, community and they represent the voice of the community. And we'll be reading this play and we'll be discussing it in class, Antigone. And you each will be able to design one of the characters, we'll all design Antigone, and then you'll design two other characters so that you get used to looking at a play as a whole and how it can be, the characters can be made visual. This is, will just be an assignment. We will show those to the director. If he likes them, we'll, we will um, talk to the, act, to the characters and we will try to have a cohesive look for the play. Because as the costume designer, which I am, I am also responsible for the look of the makeup. So we can talk through that and see how that can be best represented. Because it's a Zoom show, it will have to be something that the actors can actually work on at home, right? And they can, they can actually manipulate whatever it is so that they can work on it at home. Okay, any questions? Let's take a little break. I, it's a little bit early, but I want to try and get this little workshop thing set up for us. And then I'm going to uh, do makeup materials when we come back, okay? So I'd like to look at that list of, um, of the, what I sent you from Ben Nye that comes in your makeup kit. We're gonna go through each one of those materials. And I'm gonna talk to you about how you use them, how you use different kinds of pieces of the material and what they're good for, okay? So I wanna set up, I actually wanna try and set up and see if I can send you this, um, exercise and see if you guys can look at it. Okay. All right. So we'll take, we'll just come back at, at 148. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Tam. Thank you. See you. Take a good break, wiggle around, do whatever you need to.
Okay, when we sit down at the makeup counter, you want to, when you're an actor particularly, you want to get into your own space. So if I was coming in as an actor or as a makeup artist, you want to identify where your space is and this becomes your little home. It's like your own little plexi tunnel. And when we're in here in the fall and we're, if we do, we're planning on doing a in-person outdoor musical review. That's where we're at right now. And that might happen at the very end of the semester. So I'm planning on six feet apart. We can accommodate 13 people in this room and with plexi in between. And then also we'll have people elsewhere. So uh, I have a rolling kit right here that I'm gonna look at. And the first thing we'll look at is the foundation. What is a foundation? What do you think a foundation is, anybody? Christine? Foundation is the first step of applying your makeup and also it primes and gets your face ready to pack, uh, pack on makeup and hides blemishes. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, the first thing that you actually do. That's a good, that's a good beginning. Um, I'm not going to talk about the process of the makeup first. That'll be posted online. But before you apply the makeup, and we'll talk about this Wednesday when we do the um, demo, the first thing you're going to do is prepare your skin. And you prepare your skin by not only having no makeup, but making sure that your face is completely clean so that your face has no dirt or residue from smog on your face and we'll use a toner or an astringent depending on what kind of face you have to make sure that all the particles are removed and then you can use a moisturizer very very light and then you'll work with foundation but foundation anybody know another name for foundation cover up yeah cover up i'm going to have you guys for now during this part i'm going to have you hide your video and then we're going to do speaker view so that we can see this, okay? I'm gonna hide your video, Christine, just so you know your video is gonna be hidden, okay? All right. And everyone should be muted, good. So this is foundation. This is an actual foundation that you will get. You can see the thickness of it. It has about 50 applications. This is one that I use, and this is, believe it or not, P12 Japanese. So, you know, it, the name of the foundation doesn't have anything to do necessarily with what your skin tone is. That's why we tried to look at skin tone. This is generally applied with a latex sponge, and you'll have these in your kit as well. This is a wedge. If you're allergic to latex, you can get non-latex sponges also very easily. So this is a cream foundation, meaning that this is not water activated. It is activated just by touching it. And you can, you can use your sponge and you wanna load your sponge up so that you get enough material on your sponge so that when you're applying it, you can have coverage. Okay, now this is a slightly, you can see a slightly different tone than my skin because right now with the lights, my skin is getting a little bit red, okay? But it has a great even coverage. So sometimes this is called base because as Christine said, it is a base layer. But you will have three choices of foundation and you wanna identify the one that is closest to your skin tone the one that's slightly light, lighter than your skin tone and the one that's slightly darker than your skin tone. So we will do a sample of this and you're going to do a value chart of light to dark, including all of your makeup materials. One of the other makeup materials you have in your kit is a liner. And you have, you'll have what's called three You'll have a cream liner that's white, and this is absolutely stark white, and you can apply that with a brush. You'll have two brushes, and brushes might be something that you might want more than two of because it's very difficult to keep them clean in between. 
So you will have one brush that, did you get a 10 and a three? Is that what you got, Kara? Do you see where? Um, I got an 11. Oh. And an eyebrow comb. Uh, oh, oh, wait, the there's a couple brush. more. There's a couple yeah. more. Hold on. Um, I don't know if I have the comb brush in here. It's usually very. And then I got a seven. Yeah. And a three. Right. So this is a seven. This brush is a seven. And oh, we're talking about the number that's right here. Okay. And when you are working with a cream liner, you will take your brush, you will power both sides. And this is like any paint. You want to have your, your paint only go to halfway up your brush. Okay. You're not gooing it all through the whole brush. You're keeping it really at the tip. I'm going to paint both sides. And why I'm painting both sides is because then I can make the, the most uh, impact with my brush. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw something on my face that doesn't have any relationship to the world. Okay. But I want to show you I can do something narrow by flattening it. I can create a very small line. I can create a wider line and I can create a wide line. And you'll want to be able to control the brush so that you get exactly the line that you want. But you can see that this white liner has now taken on the color of the foundation. Okay? Cream foundation and any cream makeup blends together. As soon as your brush looks like this, you have to clean it. Because I can't put that back in here, I will contaminate the white. Is that clear to everybody? Once your brush is contaminated, you can no longer put it back into your original makeup uh, container because now this would be blended with whatever you have on your face. So you really don't want to do that. So do you recommend getting a specific one for just the white and like labeling it type of thing? Or just, or I recommend cleaning your brushes. Okay. You can clean your brushes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, there are some things that you can do to clean your brushes and uh, your spirit gum remover that you have will clean your brushes. I put something in my, I'll show you what I do. You can use any cleaner. I usually put it in my hand, right? And then I can clean my brush off. You can see that I have a any sort of that's on your supplies list you guys remember it was a get a makeup cleaner look at how this completely comes off and then you can just use a tissue and wipe that off and then if there's any residue remaining i use soap and water same way and i'll show you how that works sorry i got to run away from this little camera So the, the, the uh, makeup that you get, I'm used to doing this in the whole room. I've never, I actually thought, okay, I'm going to come to school. And it's like, all right, I didn't really set up. So I can then use a tissue and you'll see that there is still going to be some makeup in here. Right? I did a pretty good job. And when you're working with your brush, you want to not go like this and mash it because then your brush, the bristles get all, um, you know, they get all mixed up instead of staying nice and flat. And you really want that flatness. That's going to help you. If that doesn't clean it up completely, and by the way, we always work with a disposable paper mat down in front of us so that then at the end of the day, we can move that away. So there's something called brush cleaner. This is a, it's this horrible green color. It's barbicide. It's what you see when you go to the hairdresser and we mix it up. You can put that in your hand and then I'm mixing my uh, brush with it. You can see I still have residue because look at the color in my hand. I'm gonna see if I can move my camera. There, see how I've made color here? 
And that's because even though it didn't come out on my tissue, my, there was still makeup in my brush, right? So you wanna make sure that you're always working with clean materials. So that's really important. Now, you're right, Colby, in that that's gonna be difficult when you're working with a multitude of colors. When we talk about application, we will talk about how you apply and start with light and then go to dark. So you'll start with light, you'll apply light, you'll put on the light, you'll clean off your brushes, and then you can go to dark, okay? And I'm telling you that way because it's easier to go from light to dark than it is from dark to light, okay? Does that make sense for everybody? Hey, Pamela. Yeah. Um, when I am doing a makeup using the same brush on the same talent, right. I tend, and I have that happen and I need to clean the brush yep. um, quickly, I use like baby wipes. Yep. But that's only, you have to put that disclaimer that it's only the brush for the same talent and you're not right. so what, contaminating creams. But. Very, very, very important that Kara is saying, and this will happen because this makeup class is the class that all the film students come to. They want you to come and do makeup for their films because they don't know what they're doing. And by the time you get through the first six weeks, you already know more than basically anybody at the makeup counter or anything like that. So what Cara's talking about is something that we are gonna talk more about on Wednesday, which is hygiene and sanitization and keeping it safe in between if you're gonna have multiple talent. So let's say you're gonna do makeup for a movie and you have two talent. If you don't have isolated brushes so that you can have a brush for, two brushes for Bob and then two brushes for Harry so that you keep their, their separate, which is what we do, and when we work, each talent gets a baggie with their name labeled on it, with their powder puff, with their things that will have their skin contact, okay? But if you don't have a chance to do that, then what I do is a 99% alcohol. And then we have a small dish with 99% alcohol, and then 99% alcohol, the brush, after the brush is clean to this point that I just did, then you can put it in 99% alcohol and you can be quite assured that there's no germ remaining. I will tell you that COVID is, I've been on several safety meetings with that and actually 70% alcohol is more, destroys COVID better than 99%. And I think that's because of the evaporation rate. Yeah, 90% um, dries too quickly, it evaporates too quickly. So, right. so it's great for cleaning your brush. Right. But then you could do, uh, if you wanna make sure that you're done with COVID and often you would put it into a 70%. Often you're going to do multiple uh, cleaning solutions to get to an actually sanitary brush. Right. So that's in the future. And right now we are working on just ourselves. So the brush that you're using is just yourself. You can use baby wipes in between because you're gonna put them on yourself. A baby wipe has a, a cleaner permeated into the actual tissue itself. I cut them in four so that you're working with a, a square like this instead of a square like this. Oh, that's so smart. <laughs> yeah, and then you can just quickly use that and clean that off, and then you're basically using only a quarter of a baby wipe per makeup, and it's really worked super well that way. So that's just an FYI. We'll talk about that more. Okay, I'm just gonna wipe this off. You'll see that one of the nice things about the cream makeup is it does, this is pretty forgiving. I have super dry skin, but you can see that that comes off and that both things come off easily. I have this little, um, this is a makeup remover, which is, you know, it's a, I think it's a German brand, but it doesn't matter. You can use, you know, my mom used Pond's cold cream. It's one of the ones that has the least additives to it. So you use something that is compatible with your skin. That's really the important thing, okay? We're gonna talk about more about application technique when we do the demo when I, and I'll have it set up. I'm gonna try and get a, maybe I can get a, um, a camera so that it won't be so complicated just to the computer. Okay, so this is, this is your white cream liner and you will also have a highlight probably most of you will have an extra light and you can see it's exactly the same size, right? 
And you can tell it's different because look at this is bigger. The foundation is bigger. And notice that my highlight, I'm going to take the lid off. The highlight is at least three shades lighter than your base. And that's exactly what you want for the best blending. Okay. See how, the, how great this color is by comparison to base, highlight. Here's my character shadow, also a terrific color. This has a bit of red to it, which sometimes different people have more red in their skin than others, and so it, it tends to be slightly different. But we also have the misty violet if you want a more purple. So there's the darker character shadow, CS3. That's character shadow CS3 is the color. So here's our three things together. And you see there's my foundation right in the middle. There's my highlight and there's my shadow. And if I need to pump that up and make it a little bit brighter, then I can use that white liner, okay? The white liner is very handy. You can also use it to just touch the edges of the hair if you want to create a slightly templed color in your hair. You can do it on the brush and then you can powder that with either cornstarch or baby powder to get uh, to keep it white and to keep it so that it is set and firm. I'll even show you how to... Uh, oh, one thing that's really sad that we don't get to work with because I have it here in the shop is um, clown white and it's a great makeup, but I'll show you how to work with it. And it's just a, it's fantastic. People say, oh, it moves all over the place. But if you set it with cornstarch, it does not move. And it will not move, uh, no matter how much you sweat or how much you do anything with. So those are some really basic things you have. You have your three foundations, you have your highlight, your shadow, and your white liner. Okay, you also have something called a dry rouge. And that is this material. It's a, it's a pressed powder. It is generally applied with a, a brush. I guess I'll use this one. You're going to get a brush that looks sort of like, I don't know what I do with it, like this a little bit, but it'll be skinnier. Okay, car, right? It's a joke brush. But you can apply rouge with it. This is, this is a good powder brush. This is a brush that I use for the rouge because it's powdery and I'll show you the difference. Watch, if I'm powdering up, look. See how the, you can see how the powder actually comes off and it sticks to this. Not creamy at all. And you can actually brush that on, okay? And you can see that the brush can help move it around a little bit. I do try, I'm sorry, I touched my face right there, but I try to avoid touching the face with the hands because whatever you have on your hands may not be compatible with whatever your face is or with whomever face that you're working on. It keeps your makeup more hygienic if you don't touch it. And we do use this 99% uh, spray just to sanitize in between. And then that we use that because that dehydrate, that evaporates quickly. So you're gonna have your powder that needs nothing on the top. It is a firm set. And you can remove part of it if you wish, okay, if you think it's too much. All right, you have a loose powder. I think loose powder is the best. Looking for mine. I haven't looked at this kit for quite a while. <laughs> But he's been working on this because it's all stuck together. Okay, with loose powder, I like to shake the powder onto a paper towel. Shake it, use my puff, roll my puff into my powder to load it up, and then I can apply it. Okay, notice that's with a dabbing motion. The great thing about that is it doesn't glob onto here. If you if you shake it onto here, then you have to roll your powder puff. Okay, and if you roll your powder puff to get it evenly dispersed, then you can put it over the face. 
Now, one great thing about the powder puff, completely washable, okay? You can throw it in the lingerie bag with uh, your laundry if you want. You can also wash them by hand. Here's an example of one uh, when I was doing a fast backstage thing. I just labeled everybody's puff in their own bag so that that was Molly three. We had one, two, three Mollies. So that's, you're gonna get your powder puff and your loose powder. You will also get hair color. Let me see what I have here. Oh, I have ivory. So this is a makeup material to color hair. It is required that you shake it and you really do have to shake it. This is like uh, spray paint or like fingernail polish. You want to make sure that it's well mixed. This is the reason I ask you to bring the toothbrush. Yes, I have multiple toothbrushes. Because a toothbrush is going to be better to put that on. I have a toothbrush for hair color and I have a toothbrush for eyebrow color. So I can put eyebrow on and then I can brush the brow so they can be uh, more natural, okay? So I actually have two toothbrushes. How do you get a toothbrush that you've used? You boil water, you stick your toothbrush in it. You First of all, you wash your toothbrushes as, as much as you can like this, right? And then you boil water, stick it in, then it's hygienic. Don't leave it in there because this will melt. You take it out, let it dry, and then you can use it, okay? So when you're working with this, there is a brush in here. Don't use it, just, take, just saying. It's like, what are you gonna do with that? If I guarantee you, if I put this on my hair, it'll look like white out and it'll be a big stripe. If I can put this onto a, this is what I do. If I can put it into a lid, a small container, this is an old backstage trick. Cara, don't laugh at me, I know you've done this. Right, and I can put it in here. Then I can put my toothbrush in there and load this up. And the great thing is it won't, it'll just load up the, just the edge of the bristle so that when I touch the hair, I'm only gonna get a few, not the skin, Pam. I'm just gonna get a few hairs, okay? And then you can make the color work beautifully for you. If you This is particularly important when we get to eyebrows so that you can go backwards and you can just touch the hair of the eyebrow and then you see how you can make it disappear and you can make it into a color. This is one of the best ways to obliterate or to unyoung your eyebrows. Not that I have young ones anymore. I used to have beautiful young ones, but now I have old brows. But there, now you can see that I have an older brow. I have not touched my skin, but the, the brush, the toothbrush makes you have every hair covered instead of this thing, which I have no idea how to even make it work. Let's try, shall we? I'll try it on this side. I have to, when you're going to do your brows, you want to actually do the underside first. Uh, see, I just, I already had good color on that one, so whatever. But you can't control this as well. It's going to make a bigger blob. I'm doing pretty well. But you can see it's a much more um, thick application and not nearly as natural. So this is a great hair color. It washes out. That's a real plus and it dries stable on the head. So that's one of the good, good products that you have. Again, I use the lid so that when I put this in, I know I'm only gonna get a very small amount on that and I can change that color and make that go into the hair and not touch the skin. And that is a really important thing. When you touch the skin, you end up with a big blob. We're gonna practice this, so no worries, but you're just gonna have all these really cool things in your kit. What else shall we look at? We did hair color, latex. Ooh, let's see. There, there's a couple of favorite things. This is your spirit gum. And again, one of the things you wanna be careful with spirit gum is that you don't glue the lid shut, right? Speaking of gluing the lid shut, what do you do when you glue the lid shut? You use 99% alcohol 
and you turn this upside down with a brush and a Q-tip and you get it out. So this is just like any other kind of glue material. You really want to avoid having the glue on the screw part of the, of the lid. This brush is not so bad. You know, you're gonna brush a very small period. Oh, I'll show you how, I'll just put it on my hand. You can brush, you can actually place it, the brush is small, and you can see that there's a slight gloss where I've placed it, right? So we'll use this technique when we do our spirit gum and our crepe hair. And spirit gum, you will have to let dry a certain amount before you actually apply something to it. And then before I actually screw that back on, I'm gonna get my, my alcohol and rub around there so I don't have that glued so tightly. Spirit gum is one of the things you wanna be extremely careful with. Make sure your lids are on securely. I've had so many bottles of spirit gum fall on the floor and on your clothes and on the table. So that's one thing in your workspace, you want your spirit gum to go far away from you so that you're not accidentally going to knock it over with anything, okay? So spirit gum takes a while to dry. Okay, we're gonna, you can see now that the skin is getting pulled up, see how my finger's sticking to it? This is exactly the time when you'd wanna apply your crepe hair because then it's gonna perfectly kiss the face and stay there in a perfect position. You will get a latex. Let me see if I have a latex here. Mm, I don't see latex. Okay, well, I'm just gonna show you. You'll get latex in a container about like this, and we're actually gonna use it. We'll do, we'll, uh, make some eyebrows that you can block out. Latex is one thing you never want to use in the area of hair because it will pull your hair out. It will absolutely pull your hair out. So you don't want to do that. It's worse than any kind of tape, but you can use it on your face. You can use it to create certain kinds of techniques and you can use it to create an appliance. And then you peel that appliance off of this, of the plastic and you can apply that over top of your eyebrows if you want to do something like that. You will have blood. So this is very important. Do I hear, I, Christine, you're probably cheering for that. Um, and this has no applicator. So what are we gonna use for that? Q-tip. And the ones in your kit are very fancy and they're the pointed ones. The dollar store often has 1,000 Q-tips for $1. So I'm recommending those. You get a few bad ones, but you want to be able to, again, uh, you want a single application if you're gonna put a Q-tip into your blood or you're gonna pour your blood into the lid and then use the applicator in the lid, apply the blood, wash the lid out, and then you can put your lid back on your blood. Again, this is just to avoid contamination. So uh, the blood is a great material. I'm gonna show you how viscous it is meaning it has some thickness to it, right? Awesome, huh? And that is a really great um, thing. Uh, I, everybody has to resist the, I'm trying to get this to come out. Everyone has to resist the um, making your accident victim just with blood. No, you have to do your technique first. Blood is the very, 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 very last thing that goes on. So I'm going to show you those three drops. Awesome. Right? And if I was going to apply this with a Q-tip, you know, I can apply it any old way. So, but you don't want to have just blood on top of something. You will be underpainting to create the technique and then you'll put the blood on as an accent. But everyone gets stage blood. It's a really kind of fun thing. You also get nose and scar wax. This is Pam's nose and scar wax. This is another thing that I would say don't dig in here with your finger. I use What I give you guys is popsicle sticks. So I'm going to show you.
I'm sorry we're not here because it would be so fun. Um, but I use these coffee stirrers. They're cheap. You can break them in half. And that way you're not digging into this material with your hand. First of all, it's quite sticky, but also you don't want the material again to be contaminated, okay? And this is one that you need to have, um, you need to have a lubricant to use with it. You can either use something like KY, which is a um, water-based lubricant, or you can even use your spear gum remover, which is one thing that um, Ben Nye recommends, which, you know, I'm not super keen on that because then you're adding a, um, you're adding an oil on top of already something. But what you wanna do is make this malleable. And then this is a material we will use and you can use it to create shapes on your face. And you put this on before your foundation and then you would foundation on top of that. So you can make, I'll go through the skin. This is just a sample, okay? And then to get that off, you use a string. And of course, I don't have a string, I have it over here. I am so sorry, I didn't set up completely. So I have a great string like this that I use, and you can use a heavy thread, and then you even, you're, you'll spear come underneath, and then when you take it off, you slide that underneath, and it will just lift off. So we'll be using nose and scar wax. That's what nose and scar wax is. There is something called, um, this is a mortician's wax that they use because you know when you, when you die, you have your skin falls away from your bones. And you can see that in my face more easily than in your younger faces because you can see that my skin is falling away from my bones instead of being nice and plump up here, right? But when someone dies, they lose a lot of that texture underneath. So sometimes they use what's called a filler and that would be nose and scar wax. So it's something that you can change the three-dimensional shape of your nose, the three-dimensional shape of your chin. You can actually block eyebrows out with it as well. There's a number of things that we'll be able to experiment with in terms of nose and scar wax. Okay, and then you have three pencils. Your pencil color will depend on your skin tone and on your kit. So you'll get an eyebrow pencil, a lip pencil, and probably a black which I don't seem to have. Let's see, I can have one right here. Okay, so you can have a black. Um, and it depends on what your coloring is, depends on what lip, pen, lip pencil you'd get. So this is a bright red, this is a maroon, uh, and also it depends on what lip color you're going to apply. But generally for our kit purposes, you're going to get one eyebrow brush, one lip brush, and then a black. The eyebrow will be the one that is probably the taupe or the brown. The black will be one that will be considered an eyeliner color. And then the, the red tone, whether it's brandy, maroon, red, will be what's called the lip liner. These are a little tricky to sharpen. <coughs> and a pencil sharpener is on your um, kit list. So I personally, uh, I like a metal sharpener. And one thing that when you see the video is you can also put these in the freezer and they'll be cold because if they're in front of this mirror, they get very, rather soft. And they're great because you can, again, just like a brush, you can control this so that you have a very narrow line. I'll just do it here. So I'll just give myself more eye breaks. You can have a very narrow line and you can have a very wide line, okay? And that's one of the things that we were talking about, okay? So it's how you move the, the I went from the point, I flattened it out on the side and then I went and feathered it out to the edge. And you can see how even though I've done nothing else, I now have created with, and I would do more shadow and highlight on this, but I've created the shape of the eye simply with one pencil. And we'll learn a great scar technique with that too, using a two color pencil. One of the things you can use to, uh, 
And this is a safety issue, but one of the things you can use to sharpen a pencil is with a, a razor blade and you can put it on the table and sharpen this way. And then you can get a good chisel point. So that's something you might want to keep in mind, but you will want to sharpen your pencils occasionally. And try not to use an automatic pencil sharpener. It'll just gum up the pencil sharpener and it will just eat up your pencil in a second, okay? So these three pencils have, it's a very soft point. It's not like a lead, but it's harder than makeup, okay? So it is a makeup product, and that's what you wanna do. I personally like to keep the ends because then it can protect the tip. All of the points will, all of the pencils will come with this plastic protector, and I think that can be very valuable. Okay, the little comb brush, which is what uh, Cara was mentioning before. This is, you'll have a little comb brush. This is something that you can use this to apply hair color. You can use the comb. I like it particularly to uh, brush the eyebrows back. But this used to be called the bikini comb. It was a comb that we actually ratted hair with. It was a very, very tiny narrow comb and it got really bad snarls which everyone loved but you can brush out lashes with it you can brush out and make the hair all be in one complete alignment for your eyebrows and you can use the edge of it so that you can actually shape the brow okay so it's a great device for shaping applying and then also we can distort the brow so that we get this the non-uniform brow. And some of you have fabulous brows and you're going to have a hard time working against those brows the whole semester. So you do get this little comb brush. You get a fantastic, well, where is that? Uh, you get, this is, comes, you get 12 of these wedges. That comes in a brick. And again, this is your applicator. You will apply highlight with that. You can apply shadow with the sponge. You don't need to always apply with a brush. You can use the edges. You can use the flat side. There's a lot of options here. And there's sort of a rougher side that you can use and a smoother side. And there'll be different ways that you want to, there'll be different times when you want to use each one of these sides. This is a reticulated sponge. You can see that it has a lot of holes in it. And this is a great sponge that we use to put into a makeup. And I'll just use the center of this again and we apply it into a palette and then the makeup comes on to the dots and you can apply skin texture, freckles, age spots, and you have a really great way to, sometimes you stipple the shadow in instead of blending it so that it's not so dark. So you have, a this is a controlling device and it's a really incredible device to create skin texture and other effects. So that's, that is your stipple sponge. This is your sponges included in the kit. And 12, this is, comes in a brick. It looks like a brick, but it's 12 actually of these sponges all in the kit. So all I'm showing you things that are only in your kit. There are things that we'll use outside of the kit too, like toothbrushes. Those are things you have at home based on your um, supplies list that we went over the first day of class. So if you didn't do that, you might wanna look at that part. Um, the pencil sharpener is not included in your kit, nor is a razor blade, but that's something you can uh, get. And also a, some kind of a palette. You know, they use a palette knife and that's uh, a, a dentist uses, a lot of the materials that dentists use, we use. I was just getting a crown and I said, oh, is that gel trait? And that's, oh yeah, it's alginate gel trait and we use it for face casting. But these things are great because again, they're one use, they can help. Like if I had a lot of this uh, nose and scar wax, I could actually, after I do my, um, my string, I could actually scrape whatever residue off if I wanted to be really careful and then throw it away. And then you're not spending a lot of money and you're not ruining a brush. Just like you never wanna put one of your brushes into spirit gum. If you wanna put a brush in spirit gum, just know it's dedicated and then you're gonna have to clean it and eventually it will wear out and the bristles will probably pull out. So you wanna be sure about that. Okay, I'm checking my list. I was looking to see if I had a brush. This is more like the brush that you guys will get in your kit for your rouge brush. You can buy a bigger brush. You know, I used to have, um, this is a, a barber brush, Mac. I used to go to the, the baby department 
and they would have different brushes to, to brush powder off of babies. And that's one for if you want to remove powder, after you've put it on with your puff, you can remove excess by using a brush. That's where I would find one of those brushes. And they were fairly reasonable, like bet between two and five dollars. So, okay. The only other things that we need to talk about are the, um, the little quad packs that are really cool. The, the bruise and abrasion wheel and the contour wheel. So I'm going to go get those. I'm just going to um, walk over and get them. I'm going to take a little drink. And why don't we take a tiny break? Like just, it's not, we're not going to go away, but we can just take a break. I'm going to stop recording for a minute. Okay, so the bruise and abrasion wheel has goldenrod, fresh cut, misty violet, which is a violet. It's purpley tone and deep maroon. So these are all things that we'll use when we use bruises and when we do our accident victim. They're also great for a uh, black eye. And sometimes we can use some of those, like the Misty Violet is great. If I was gonna do a really deep eye bag, I, instead of this red tone, I could do the Misty Violet tone there. And then a contour wheel. Has colors that you can contour and um, this isn't really a good one. This is not, this is. I'll show you this one. So there's, there's a wide variety of these wheels that you can get. We will get a contour wheel that will have, um, it will have uh, deep cinnamon in it. It has four colors in it. It has a cream lip color, a cream rouge color, black, and cinnamon, okay? So it will be a four pack just like this. I wanna show you a couple of other things. This is called an aged stipple wheel. So it has a cinnamon color. It has a darker uh, between a character shadow and a highlight color. And then some of these colors that have a bit more green in them because that's the way that age kind of tends to look on the face. So when you get those, you will see that on the back, they will not be labeled. So we will spend some time labeling them so you know exactly what the materials are that you're using, okay? So mine just came with a cream contour wheel and a bruising abrasion. Bruising. Yeah, you get two of them. Okay, but there you was no anti-aging. You won't get an aging wheel. And the other thing you don't get in this kit is you don't get tattoo cover. Uh, and tattoo cover, I'm just bringing that up because uh, now every makeup artist has to deal with tattoos. And if you guys have a tattoo and you need to cover it up, then you'll need to um, get additional tattoo cover. You can get a tattoo wheel. Uh, you won't have to do it for this class, but if you're gonna work in the industry, you'll need that. You can get a wheel which has a wide variety of colors or you can get just small uh, pots of different tattoo cover. Tattoo cover tends either towards the yellow or towards the orange. You know, it's, it's either sort of warm, like this is warmer and these two are cooler. And it depends on what color they have. If they really have the Indio ink, that is the deepest color and it's one of the hardest to cover up. But you just repeatedly Put your tattoo cover on top of the tattoo itself. You don't go beyond the tattoo. And I have a whole protocol about that and I'll post that too. So that you can use, um, you can get tattoo cover and you can cover that up. We had to do a whole, my, my very first year here, I said, let's put those kids on, uh, let's do that part in a film so that we didn't have to dress these, all, you know, like eight girls in party dresses and then do this one 30 second dance. And so we, we filmed it and this one girl had a big, you know, um, something butterfly or something right in the middle of her back and the dresses were low. So we did, I think probably six or eight layers of tattoo cover powder by tattoo. You do makeup powder, makeup powder, makeup powder, and then it eventually completely went away and then you could put foundation on top of it. Okay, I think that's everything in the kit. Let me um, see if you have any other questions about that. No. So I'm going to ask you, how many of you have 
you can all we can we can have everybody see their video and how many of you have found one at least one picture for your corrective and one picture for your glamour have you found anything like that yet because i want to show you my picture And I will, I'm going to type it up before we get to there. I'll also give you a skeleton to look at. Just a second. Let me see where is my girl. Pam's. Go to Pam's folder. Okay. So this is uh, what I've done for my... corrective. Very, very simple makeup worksheet for corrective, right? And that is based on this picture. Because this is my corrective image that I'm using. And the reason why I picked this person is a fairly, I mean, yes, she has makeup on, we know that. But it's a face shape that's similar to mine. If I'm going to correct, I want to correct towards a younger look. It is pretty neutral in terms of highlight and shadow so that I can see all of those things, right? So then I've made my worksheet based on how I'm going to correct for that. Now for me, for correction, I'm going to have to do primer or concealer underneath my foundation before I put my foundation on, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna have the smoothest foundation possible, but I wanna make sure that I'm doing that underneath so that I get rid of my eye bags, get rid of my super deep um, eye, eye sockets, okay? So that's something that I wanna do. And then if I'm going to turn this girl into glamor, I'm going to emphasize and enhance the brow, the lip, the liner, and the and the mascara okay so you're going to do two worksheets but i'm showing you this for simplification note that when you draw the brow you want to draw a realistic brow as opposed to drawing a line of a brow now i know that it's very common uh you know what we say the instagram brow <laughs> I think you should save that for your glamour. If you want to do a really, uh, a really drawn on brow, I would save that for glamour. There will be times when we do a drawn on brow, certainly for historical. But if we look at my, if I look at my sample, I can see individual hairs in her brow. So that's why I want you to draw individual hairs onto your thing. And I'll try and post that. I can see if I can try and scan it and post that up for you. Okay. So here's my naked face picture. And here's a naked face picture that looks more like what I look like today. <laughs> I think I'm a little younger there. And then when I get my, just my corrective on, okay? And that's, that's what we're gonna work with. And if you guys wanna think about if you have your, um, any of your pictures with you, Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the um, worksheet off of the, let me just get it off of the email, and I want to post it so you can take a look at it, the rubric, so that you know this is how we're going to work. I hate it that even email types out, uh, times out, you know? So... Here we go. Awesome. That's going to work perfectly. So let me rotate. Let me see if I can rotate this. I might be able to rotate it when I come to the, if I load my file in, let me just, do, let me see if I can do that first. So this is what I have to do when I go through different processes. This is how it scans to me, right, like this. 
So if I go to my site and I uh, go to a, let's let me go to a page and I'll put it in. This is all the stuff that I do behind the scenes that you guys don't see, which makes you go insane. <clears throat> So if I'm going to do a corrective rubric and I can post my worksheet in there and I'm going to do the rubric. And then I'll upload a file and this is going to be a crazy, it's going to be a crazy name so we'll see it. And I'll go to my desktop. And then I have to look for it. Because it doesn't show me scans separately, you know. But something that says shouldn't be in here. Okay. The reason why I'm doing this is because otherwise I'll just show it to you. And it won't be, huh, bummer. Okay, I don't know why I can't just get it loosely. All right, well, I, d I don't know how to rotate it, unfortunately, in this format. Let's see. Where did it go? Nope. Oh, I put this in, by the way. Hmm. Okay, I got to find it again. I'm sorry, I, I thought I had it lined up, but of course I did not. Okay, let me see if I can do it this way. Oh, I, you know what I didn't do? I didn't download it yet, that's why. So let me see if I can find it. But anyway, um, I want to show you this document because this is a document, this is one of the kinds of documents that we will be working with when we work with our rubrics. And I want you to see what those are like. I have a question. When we have to turn in our like five assignments. Yeah. Are How we going to do it? Gonna scan them to you or? Oh, you can. You can scan them and upload them. You can take a picture of them and upload them. Okay. You can drop them into anything that you can put into Google. You can do that. Okay. okay. Now we can find this. I'm really so sorry that it takes me like a million years to figure out how to do anything. And now I got to find you guys. Where are you? Here you are. So yeah, this is this is my life now. It's like, oh, everything that we need to know about how we're supposed to find things. Okay, let's go to the desktop and let's find this. If this is the piece we're looking for and we can, I'm going to upload it because that way I can rotate it and I want you to see this. Great. And here we are. We didn't lose that. I'm so shocked. And it should say corrective. Here we go. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Why can't I show you? Here's my life. That's what, this is what I spend my, all my waking hours doing. So we're going to go back to here. And how can I rotate in this? Does anybody know how to rotate in this screen? What's about that? No, that's not a rotate. That's a reload. What's that do? No. 
Can you click on it and open it in a different program? That's just the I open in a new window. And then let's see if we can what we can do. And then rotate. How about that? There we go. I knew we'd get there sometime, but this is what my life is like. Okay, so this is a rubric. You will be filling these out every time we do a makeup. So, so in answer, Cara, the first few makeups we're doing, the first five, you are self-scoring. Then you send me this. This is student points, and this is instructor points. So your planning and recording of the makeup, uh, this SLO is demonstrate the proper application of safe makeup using safe, corrective, and effective techniques. Establish a base level skill point for the class. Analyze your face and prescribe corrective measures to make it look the best that it can. So the criteria is here. The level to which you've met the criteria is across the top. Your reference pictures. References are especially helpful, related, and inspirational. That is exemplary. Your references are satisfactory. You have two. They're related. They're helpful to the makeup. And these are little point values that you get for each one of these steps. Unsatisfactory is you have only one reference, or the reference is not related to the assignment. So for the corrective makeup, the references need to be somewhat in your um, where you want to go with your corrective makeup okay so that's why i picked that one picture for my reference is her face shapes the same i would like to go to that smooth unblemished skin to the no eye bags to the well-groomed brows okay and when i do that on the demo on wednesday we'll try and have that work that way character analysis we don't need a character analysis for this assignment because really you're just doing yourself and remember the character analysis is that portion on the bottom of the makeup chart very easily overlooked but you want to fill in your makeup chart completely notes and recording of products so i put in useful notes and all my products were recorded so i put down my foundation my base my highlight my shadow my concealer whatever i'm using and while you're working on your makeup and you're applying it to yourself, you can add products, but you want to have your makeup chart done before you start your makeup. It lets you go to a direction instead of, and it lets you do it more quickly instead of just not going to any particular place at all. Most products are recorded, some notes, less than two products or notes. So for example, I might say, I'm gonna try a black eyebrow pencil and then I get into the doing the makeup and I'll feel black eyebrow way too dark for a corrective. So then my note would say cross out the black eyebrow, use the taupe eyebrow pencil, more natural. Okay. And then your sketch. So your sketch looks like what you're going for. My sketch you saw was just a very few lines but it was definitely different than just a blank worksheet. And it told me that I'm doing a slight liner around the eye. I'm doing enhanced eyebrows. I'm going to do a neutral tone lip. I'm going to enlarge the top edge of my lip. We'll talk all through this next time. And I'm going to shadow and highlight the nose. Okay. This is just talking about the drawing part of it. Okay. And you get 10 points. So what's missing? On this, there's no execution. That's what I was going to say. The first, yeah, the, the first five makeups are only learning to prepare. You're going to actually do the makeup, but you're not getting graded on how did it turn out? Because some of you don't have never had any experience with that. And it probably will turn out in an unexpected way. It might be so totally surprising. Nonetheless, you will have this rubric filled out. You'll have your sketch filled in. You'll do a character analysis. You'll just write, this is me. And you'll have your inspiration pictures. For that, you get your points. Then you do your makeup. So you're, we're doing a step-by-step -step process of getting you used to, 
here's all the things I need to gather. Here's how my process I'm going to go step by step. Then I'm going to do my makeup. After the makeup's complete, you're going to take the selfie. Remember, that's the fourth piece. For glamour, same thing, same SLO, demonstrate popular, proper application of makeup, references, related and inspirational. And for here, you are going to do a character analysis because maybe I'm going to be, you know, Bambi the exotic dancer. Uh, maybe I'm going to be, I watched a great little um, thing on whacking, a TikTok video of a girl in New York that's really bringing this 70s dance craze back. It's on TikTok. Have you guys seen that about whacking? And, you know, the, she's wearing a very exaggerated makeup, and it's, but it's, it's very glamorous. Glamour is exaggerated or a runway makeup or, an ex, as we said, Ziggy Stardust, a makeup that is bigger than we're not looking for realistic. You might look at the Cirque du Soleil enhanced makeup, something like that. Okay, but same, this will be uniform for all of the planning and recording of every makeup. It'll be references. You're going to look for those pictures, your character analysis. You'll write that down in those little boxes on the, on the uh, worksheet, your notes and recording of your products, and your sketch. Okay, so for the first five makeups, which are, and, I'm, and I'll detail that out for you, but it's corrective, glamour, thin and round, and clown. We're just learning how to present the information on a page. We're learning how to draw it on the worksheet. We're learning how to use the materials, okay? The execution is gonna happen. And I've actually, one of my absolute very best students ever just was like, Pam, I'm not going to make it in this class. This is like, ah. and the first six weeks are heavy lifting. And I'll tell you that. And it's like, so Colby, you've never done it before. And you're going to just be like, why did I do this? And there will be a moment, and this happens for every single student. If you put in the work, there's a moment where suddenly you've stopped resisting it and you're over the edge. Somehow you are making this your own. And so this other thing can happen where you've made it your own and you're thinking, wow, I'm doing so good. And then you're like, whoa, how did that happen? And then you go backwards, then you go forward again. But I'm telling you, if you stick with it, it will work for you. This is, it's, we are working in these very small steps. So we're gonna work with corrective, then we build on that with glamour. Then we're gonna do a very specific thing, which is do thin and then round so that we understand this is how we shape the face to an extreme. Okay, so just you just gotta hang in there with it. All right, questions, because we're almost out of time. Um, I have one, when we're doing our... Worksheet? Yeah, um, sorry, my brain stopped. Uh, besides the sketching on the actual face, do we do a step-by-step -step write out instruction? Like first- No, you can. You don't have to do step-by-step. -step. You can just fill in your products. Okay. Right? And then if you wanna just number them, you know, if you wanna write, I'm gonna do foundation number one. You know, I mean, basically we're in a really basic application stage, so it's sometimes helpful to have, I'm doing this one first, and then I'll do this one second. Like if you wanna do your foundation, like I'm always gonna do correction underneath. That's my number one. Then I'm gonna do foundation number two. Then I'll do all highlight. Then I'll do all contouring shadow. Then I'll powder. You know, if you want a number so that you make sure you're doing them in order. And if you decide you're changing your order, no problem. It's a way to just discover. Okay, and then do we only use the makeup in our makeup kit? You can use anything you want. Okay. Always in this class, you can use anything you want. I mean, that was only a slight joke about using um, whiteout, right? Yeah, well, for most of it, I'll use the kit, but like when it comes to corrective on me, like- Yes, yeah, absolutely. It. I mean, I have things that I'm gonna use that, that are not in the kit. Right. 
right. you know, or if you have if you have a ruddy complexion and you want it neutralized, you're going to use a green primer underneath your foundation. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll talk about that. That's why we're going to do one demo day and you can say, oh, Pam, that's not looking so good. And then, you know, so, and then I'll take a selfie. And then I'll upload it and we'll see how all that works. Okay. All right. Any other questions? And then Christine, I'll get to you. No, doesn't it sound like fun? Great. Some people, Chantal, uh, Chanel had to go to the dentist and some other things happened. That happens. That's why we have this uh, recording. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.